Projo AR filters um, asked how to set a blur to full screen, but fade from blur to transparent. Let's see. So as we saw last week, if you go into the asset library and you go to, um, could it be materials? And search Gaussian blur or just search blur if you don't know. Um, okay, so it is in the, which section is that? Maybe materials or maybe screen effects. I think, yeah, I think it's screen effects. So yeah, in screen effects, there's all kinds of things that you can do that you could use as post-processing or you could use in a lot of different ways. So we're gonna grab the Gaussian blur, which just happens to be a material. So that'll work the same way as pretty much any material. Um, and you don't have to use it in this post-processing stack. So the first thing I would do is just well, we want to make make it go from um, transparent to non-transparent. So we basically just want to mask it, right? Um, that's that's essentially what masking is. And can we poke in here? Okay. So I don't think we can edit this material, right? It's just a it's a hard coded one. Um, so then, in that case, in the post processing effects. I'll add my own render texture so I can capture the whole screen blurred. And that will be what we use. So go to texture, render texture, add that. And this will be our blur render texture. I accidentally had cap lock, caps lock, but that's fine. And then in the Gaussian blur with the post-processing effect, um, the easiest way to get this out into the render texture is just to change this final render output here in the camera component and we'll change it to our blur render texture. And that means that our camera that would be showing us this blur is instead drawing it to a texture that we can use for something else. Um, so then we won't see this anymore because it's not going to the final screen. And then if we want to use it, now we can add a screen image and our screen image, um, if we select it, we can set that texture that we're creating. It should just look like the screen, but blurry. Um, and it looks pretty much like the screen, but blurry. But if we adjust this material, we can make it more or less blurry. And remember, it's capturing to a render texture, and we're just seeing that render texture painted back to another camera. So in that one, we can create our own material. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much our our only option. Unless you want like a, one of these, you could maybe do filled if you don't want it to be a ramp curve. But let's create a new uh, material. And so this material, we can use this on our screen image and this will just change how the image is rendered. Instead of just rendering it flat out to the screen, let's say um, mask material, because it's just taking in the blur. You don't have to use the blur. You can input anything, right? And we'll do a texture. We'll sample texture 2D. And what you can do if you want to be able to change this and reuse this material and like duplicate it and use it for other textures, is you could add the texture 2D here in the parameters and then pipe it in, <laughs> or you could just select here. Um, so our blur render texture, oops. Uh, blur render texture, there we go. And then I think we would want, um, the screen coordinates, you could also do texture coordinates, but it depends on how, how you're going to deform this uh, screen image and like how you want it to look when you deform it. I, I prefer screen cord because then it looks more like a mask. Um, and then let's see, you could import a mask that ramps from like white to black or transparent to 
non-transparent. Uh, but we could also just here's a here's a quick hack that I use in a lot of cases. So I'll show you the way that I use it in a lot of cases because I don't know if it's more common for me, it might be more common for you. Um, and we'll add alert. So what we want is maybe not even an alert, uh, maybe a split from the RGBA. And then we'll do an append for. Append for is like combine in the uh, regular visual scripting where it will just create whatever, uh, create a vec for. So now we have the colors uh, and now we want the, just the alpha. So we'll take this alpha and we'll set it equal to the Y value. And that'll create like a kind of a ramp so that the higher in the screen you go, the more it changes it. Oh yeah. And on our screen image, uh, now that we've put this value in here and we're using it on an image, this image here that I put in, doesn't matter. We can change that to any texture if we use our mask material because the image is being put into the mask material. Um, <clears throat> and we'll just set this to stretch so that we know it's definitely full screen. And then uh, one other thing, whenever you create a material, this is just an important reminder, you have to change the blend mode so that it's not on none, because the blend mode none means that it'll be fully opaque and it'll never be transparent. So you can change it to normal and that will have transparency. So now, um, as you can see at the top, it's blurry and at the bottom it's not. Um, so if you have a mask, I'll try to import. I'll see it. I'll see what I have. I probably have some kind of mask from some project. <laughs> and we can we can see how you do it with the texture real quick. Okay, nice. Um, if you take a look back at this uh, project, you can see I added this spray texture. This is the this is like the most uh, rampy texture I have, meaning like it goes gently from transparent to opaque. And you might recognize it as like a spray paint kind of brush. So I use this to paint on where the blurry part is. So you can see that it gradually looks blurrier the cent more centered it is. And the way that I did this was I just used this spray texture that I have, which just looks like this. And I use a texture coordinate to plug in so that I can move it around the screen. And then I just sample the texture. And instead of drawing that blank white spray paint texture, I just sample how much alpha it has in each pixel. So the alpha, instead of controlling um, drawing this texture, we're just controlling how much of that blur texture in screen space to draw. Uh, so that's how you would do it. And you can do that with any transparent uh, image that you want to import to create this uh, effect. Yeah, pretty pretty similar to that one that we were doing in last week's live. I hope that's clear and helpful. And if you want, I've zoomed in on this to get as much of it in the screen as possible in case you want to screenshot it and try take a stab at it yourself. <clears throat> 